it's time for the Dr. Tanji Show. Hey, you're on the air with Dr. Tanji. Talk to me. As soon as I hear your voice, Dr. Tanji, my day is better. Hey, Dr. Tanji, I took your advice and made some changes in my life. And you know what? I've been winning ever since. Thank you for your advice. Now, here's Dr. Tanji. Hey, 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 and welcome to the show, Founded on Kingdom Principles, a show that will help you go from where you are to where you want to be, a show that has people that come by the studio and actually show us how they got here, what they're doing in the marketplace, in hopes to inspire and motivate us as well. And you already know we can't do a show without your girl, Jeannie Jones, Kitty of the City. Meow, Dr. T. <laughs> Look at you, I looking know, like right? you just got off a, a private jet. Oh. I really think you land on top of the LA Talk radio roof. That's, that, you know, I won't tell you know, anybody, but know, I think that's how you fly in sometimes. You know what? <laughs> Flattery will get you You, you feel You feel that way, though. I know you do. I resemble that remark. <laughs> And not to mention KJ, guys. KJ. We got KJ in the studio. Absolutely, with the man. The okay. ninja. The ninja. I know, right? And you know what? I'm excited uh, about your show today. Yes. You've got uh, a power actress uh, who's one of the number one shows on Oprah's own network yeah. talking about her leadership impact. And also, this guy is impacting students uh, spiritually mm. and has a movement called Alpha to Omega, know, beginning right? to end. I mean, that, that, that says everything <laughs> by itself. So can't wait to introduce him. But first, yeah. first, talk about those principles. You know, I, 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 I find myself I don't like to write down things right but there are times when you just have to <laughs> if you're going to be all over the place but this leadership series has been it's been a an, an eye opener for me because I have to check myself every day and I'm checking myself by these principles and I uh I got work to do so uh let's do this together right this is part four of my part, uh, five-part series of leadership. And just a couple of nuggets that I really, really want you guys to remember. I want you to remember that leadership, as it relates to the biblical kingdom principles that we study, you were born to be a leader. You were born to lead, and you're designed to dominate. True leaders are relentless they bear the answers to questions that will allow them to share their gifts. So you have gifts, and you have to serve us with your gift. You're going to serve your community, you're going to serve the marketplace, and you're going to serve others. Unfortunately, you do not serve yourself with your gift. I need you to know that your attitude is more important than your reputation when it comes to being an effective, true leader. Four principles that I want you to jot down. One, as a leader, you do not seek to or pursue followers. You attract them. Number two, your passion can be so strong, so strongly seen and felt by you that it leads men and women to risk their lives for its fulfillment. Number three, conviction about your life purpose. This is what's going to lead you to keep going in the midst of obstacles, and we know how challenging that can be. Number four, failing to discover or pursue your personal leadership potential. It's going to deprive you. It's going to deprive your generation, the next generation after them, and it's going to cause you to be responsible in trying to come up with an excuse to your creator as to why you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So let's get busy. Get busy rediscovering who you are or discovering who you are and get busy discovering that gift or gifts that you were born with to serve us because we're waiting on you. So get busy. All right? Yep. Well, <laughs> busy we are going to be nonstop. Uh, yes. And, you know, speaking of busy, yes. this is a perfect 
person to to say that she is. Not only is she having the hottest girl summer she is also on one of the hottest shows on television right now specifically ambitions on the own network produced by my guy will packer wow. and she's rolling around with some vicious powerful sisters uh essence atkins who plays amar hughes and forever can't tell whether she coming for you or at you robin givens who plays stephanie lancaster yeah. but joining us now is is Felicia Turrell, who plays the character of Marilyn Barnes. You can check her out on Ambitions every Tuesday, 10 p.m. And I don't know, Felicia, you 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 a bad girl. Like sometimes you don't know if you're gonna get stabbed in the back by you either. So welcome to the show. So good at what you do. Whoa. So good at what you do. Oh, I was like, here. watch your back. I promise I won't fix any one of Martini. You, okay? hey, so, hey. You, huh? look, what do you, safe. you know what I'm saying? I mean, like I, I said, what type? These sorority sisters yeah. are vicious. Okay, ruthless, ruthless. ruthless. Yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Felicia. And thank you so much. Absolutely. I know auditions, and then not only is she going to talk about how her platform and leadership through trials and tribulations. You see, power actresses, Hollywood, ATL, wherever, but they have the same type of levels and challenges in life. And Felicia, if you can just talk about what it's been like through your transitions in acting and even, you know, having a two year old and, and, and just wow. the challenges in life. Can you talk about, you know, how, you know, leadership and the things that you've done that have helped you get through? Of course, of course. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, my transition from, as you guys know, my background, I mean, I didn't, I didn't grow up acting. I didn't study theater. I didn't go to school for it. Um, my background actually was, I graduated honors from the University of Iowa in, with a journalism and marketing degree. Went to work for a Fortune 500 consulting company. I did that for a bit, decided that corporate life was not for me. And so I kind of went into pharmaceutical sales for a few years and thought, well, maybe more freedom. That would be interesting. Again, not for me. Mm -hmm. And, and making that transition so late in life and, and where it started was I had a elective class in my senior year of college, uh, which was acting and I fell in love with it. But being from the Midwest, I had that Midwest work ethic where you go to school, you get a good job, and that's just what you do. And, you know, my parents were great and supportive, but that wasn't fostered in, in my growing up. I had no examples of what that bigger life could look like. And so I think that initial transition from going from corporate America, where there is a direct correlation between how hard you work and how quickly you move up, it was this slap in the face because in, in the entertainment industry, it is not that way. There's um, a lot of luck involved, yes, a lot of hard work, a lot of persistence, a lot of, um, for me, most important thing about this business for me and, and being a leader and a mentor to, to people that are coming up underneath me or asking my advice is, is you have to be absolutely dedicated to honing your craft. It's important because when you have that integrity behind the fact that you're telling someone's story and to tell that story, um, you know, with, with heart and with um, honor and truth and to do, do your homework, it's important. And it, and it shows up on the screen. And those are the people that we gravitate to. There's a reason we why we love Denzel Washington and Sidney Poitier and, Helen Mirren, and um, I mean, I could go on and on and on. Meryl Streep, they do the work. And that has been um, something paramount for me in my career. Um, but the ups and downs, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's hard. It is hard, the rejection. Um, you hear more no's in this business than you hear yeses. And eventually those tables start to turn. But anyone that has made it, you can read their biography or articles or interviews with them, and they pretty much tell different versions of the same story that um, you have to pick yourself up, put on your big girl panties, and keep going. Because if you let it knock you down and you stay in that 
um, woe is me too long, it, it can take you out. You know, there's a lot of actors that I know um, in Los Angeles that are just ridiculously talented and, and sadly they don't get the opportunities that they should. And, and I think hopefully those, those times are changing. We are starting to see, thank God, more um, roles of just, first of all, women that are being empowered, right? That, that are of power and, and empowered. Um, women of color, um, these stories that really need to be told are finally, finally starting to happen. Um, but it's been a long time coming. And, and I'm also aware of all the women, you know, that have paved that path so that I can get the opportunities, um, you know, to, to actually pursue my passion. Um, but it's tough. It's, 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 it's not for the weak of heart. That's, that's, let's just put it that way. <laughs> yep. Uh, Alicia, you absolutely, yes. uh, incorporated everything that's real and, and needs to be heard and understood, but I couldn't help but to um, listen to the level of actors and actresses that you mentioned. Uh, the, that's the, the cream de la creme who, again, uh, through longevity and, and the way what they bring to a character is just, uh, you know, mm-hmm. unbelievable. And you even said, you know, a, a lot of people, I mean, we, we say the term act, but like you said, how, committed are you going to be to whatever it is you're passionate about that was the key thing that you said and just really I mean all of the highs and lows that we have in life the rejections the pain whether you know like I said for somebody like you I I, you know salute you again because you you know high profile you've been in a high profile marriage with an NFL player and then when when that crumbles I mean how do you say hey I have a purpose I am enough. I'm going to pick up and continue what I have to do. So what part of yourself in the turmoil made you say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. W- did you have an anchor, another person? Uh, what was it in your life? Spiritual uh, consultation therapy? What was it that helped you get through? Because that's what happens to a lot of people too, whether it's the rejection or a painful situation or situations that mount up that, that people can't get through that level of pain? Well, first thing, just to, just to clarify a little bit, we didn't actually get married. We were engaged, okay. um, but, but thankfully I, I was able to, listen, I, I have not, there's no ill will. Um, I think that, you know, he is a good human being. Um, simply we're two people that, that weren't, right for each other Mm -hmm. and thankfully um i was able to see that before taking that step um you know of of forever um but in terms of you know when anything in life um knocks you down i'm a firm believer in you can't push it away and and brush it under a rug because that stuff that's not the word I wanted to use will inevitably come back and, and continue to bite you in the ass until you deal with it. So you have to process through it. Um, you have to go through all your feelings, get it out. And then for me, like, you know, like what, what is the saying? What doesn't kill you makes stronger. Right. When someone tells me I can't do something or you started too late in life or you can't because I'm like, okay, watch me. That is, that's just who I am in terms of, um, going after, after what I want. Um, but I do think that those lessons, um, early on, um, I don't regret anything in my life because it has shaped me and, and made me the person that I am. And, and I think if anything else, um, that the guiding light always for me is, is faith and an inner knowing that when something has been placed on my heart to do, um, I listen to that and I don't always know how it's going to work out, but that's the definition of faith, right? You got to, you got to take, put one foot in front of the other. And that pathway is not always lit up like a Christmas tree. Sometimes, right. you know, you're peeking around corners. You don't know what's next. You don't know where your next job's coming from, how you're going to pay your rent. Like, hmm. you know, people knew the real story of like, you know, um, how, to, to basically go from 
graduating school with honors, having a great job with a 401k and a company car and expense account. So then when I moved to LA and my girlfriend and I who moved out there together, I mean, we had nothing. We were sleeping on blow up, you know, Coleman camping couches. And, and we had, you know, those old banker's boxes were our nightstands, you know, that used to put old I love you for in. that, Felicia. I, I love you, know you that's for that. Exactly where right, I was right, going. right. That's yep. exactly yep. right. Felicia. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and people wow. don't know the story or the struggle, but like, I can't tell you how long I ate ramen noodles mm. and how, like, the, and that was way after college, after college, I swore them off and you know what you do what you got to do. <laughs> but it. like when you, I don't care what industry you're in, what your dream is. I believe that it is never too late. It is the divine timing when it is put on your heart to do it. And you, you follow that path and you will, you will see what you're made of. Because if I'm, if I'm being really honest, I think at that point in my life, when I started this business, I I think I was looking at um, being an actor as a way of, you know, I don't want to say like, I, I, I probably actually should just say, yeah, I think there was a part of me that wanted to be famous because mm-hmm. I thought mm-hmm. that that would make me be okay, right? Whatever the stuff that was not okay with me on the inside that I had to work on and, and fully you know, become that whole person because we all have childhood bullshit and trauma and things that happen. And, and that's why I talk about the emotionally processing and figuring that out and working on yourself. But in that process, when I got to LA and got humbled very quickly after my first few auditions and was like, Oh, this shit is hard. This is not just about being attractive and saying the lines. Like I, I fell in love with, the craft and I got my butt in class and studied with the best people and continue to do so. And in that process, it didn't become about me anymore. It was about how the art could, could pass through me. I could be the vessel to tell this story I love it. so I can move, touch and, or inspire someone else. And that from that place. And that's what I tell up and coming actors. I said, if you don't know your why, why you're doing this, you will not make it. If your why is not strong enough, you will not make it. You can't just be, you know, the prettiest girl, the most attractive guy in your high school class, and, you know, you're charismatic, so you got loaded most popular, and you're going to move to L.A. to become an actor. And go work. It's not. Real talk. Real talk. There's too many talented people in this world. So those people that I look up to, I mean, I just named a few, but there's, I mean, such a long list. Um you know, we will say, oh, they have this, you know, they have it. That it that we all recognize they have is that that work, that deep work they do. Of course, they're immeasurably talented, right? Mm-hmm. But they are also are actors that really have honed their craft and and they tell stories uh, with integrity. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful gift to the world because don't we don't we need more integrity right now? Oh, absolutely. Like, this, this world, world we need as much absolutely. as we can with all the turbulence we got going on. You're right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What you're doing, Felicia, is 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 just thank you so very much. And then secondly, for you to pick up and and leave everything that was so comfortable for you. You said it best, 401k, company car. When did you know, I mean, in that soulish part of you, I got to go. It it had to be something that you said you fell in love with, you know, with with the art. But when when did you know I got to go? I I got to go. Come hell or hard water. Yeah, 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 I got to go. That's a very good question. So I was in um, Phoenix, Arizona, and it's actually um, my first pharmaceutical job. Uh, I was, we were basically, we were still in training. I hadn't even started the job yet, but I was in PPAC, New Jersey, sitting in a training room, like day three of training. And uh, the trainer says, you guys need to check your voicemail. And all of us look at each other like, well, we don't have voicemail yet because we, we, we haven't started working. He's like, just, just trust me, check your voicemail. So we checked the voicemail and the voicemail goes on to say that a much bigger pharmaceutical company had bought the one that we had all just been hired to work for. So basically (laughs) we were all going to be laid off or fired at some point. So it was just kind of, I was just like, really? God, like what? 
<laughs> why? What is happening? Yeah, yeah. And it turned out I, you know, my territory at the time, I went back, I was back in the Midwest and I, I ended up working for that company for a year and I, you know, did really well and they wanted to keep me on. And, but I knew that meant staying in the Midwest and I, you know, God will give you whispers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm, I'm getting to the point where it was so loud, but it was little whispers at this point. I just knew I didn't want to stay there, but I didn't exactly have the guts to move all the way to LA, but I had family in Arizona. So I took the severance package, which was great. They still offered those at that time. I had six months of pay and I think three months of healthcare. And I was like, I'm going. So I went to Arizona and I have always been a dancer, but self-taught, never never classically trained. It was just more of a hobby to me. And while I was in Arizona about two weeks, I was starting to look for new pharmaceutical jobs because I wanted to, you know, continue to work. And a girlfriend of mine basically dared me to audition. Some is very mature. I know, like I dare you, but she said, you should audition for the Phoenix Sun dance team. And I was like, no, no, no way. I'll never make it. I haven't danced in how many years? Like these girls are really, really great. She's like, well, what do you have to lose? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, you're right. I'm not doing anything. So I go and I had no idea how many girls would audition, but it was between five and 600 girls right. for five spots on the team. Those auditions are ruthless. Yes, right. <laughs> it was, but an NFL it, or NBA it was crazy. For, exactly. Yeah, it was preparing me for ambition. Yeah. Basically. yeah. And, 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 and that's was, why you are slaying. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these girls are like no joke, right? right? And you had to go to like all all of these classes to prepare for the even to like get into the audition. So I do all this stuff, and it's like round three, and I'm still in, and I'm kind of like I'm kind of exceeded my own expectations at this point because I I didn't expect to get that far. And during round three was an interview, and one of the judges who interviewed me was the owner of the Ford modeling agency oh, in. Wow. Arizona. I and she's it. like, Oh, have you ever modeled? Da, 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 da. And I was like, Oh, when I was young, but you know, my parents wanted me to focus on school. It's just, it's not for me kind of thing. Like I was always, you know, too hippie or not this or too, you know, not tall enough or too tall or too black or not black enough or too ethnic. Like it was always mm-hmm. something in the industry that kind of turned me off. And she said, well, I really think the market has changed and you, you could really, you know, have a future with this and I was kind of like uh-huh okay (laughs) so at the same time I made the Phoenix Suns dance team which I'm already blown I'm blown away by because I never expected to make it I got another pharmaceutical sales job and I was dance and and freaking started modeling so that was the year I basically did not sleep because I had three jobs and (laughs) through that modeling agent is how I got my agent for modeling initially in LA who connected me with my acting agent who I am still with 13 years later. Wow. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then with an agent that's, 13 know, years, that's right? a marriage. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. <laughs> right. Wow. And I, it was lined up. And in that year in Arizona, it, that little whisper became louder and louder and louder. And I remember one, specific day I had come home it was like three uh, thirty or something. And, you know, I was talking to my mom and I was like, mom, I, I really want to move to LA. And, you know, she did exactly what now being a mom, I know moms are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I support you. I hear you. I think that's a good idea, but <laughs> don't you think maybe you should make a plan, save money for a year, you know, do this, do that. I said, mom, if I don't go now, I'll never do it. And I knew that. Yeah. So that was my, okay. you know, epiphany okay. moment. It yes. was like, if I don't go now, I will, it, it just won't ever happen. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm so glad I did because my mindset was if, if I go and fall on my face, at least I know. Mm-hmm. But if I don't go, I will be wondering for the rest of my life, coulda, woulda, shoulda. And I don't, I'm not that person. Uh-huh. So Absolutely. I think everybody has those moments and you have to listen. And I think, you know, as much as social media and technology and all of these, you know, wonderful things that were afforded in in this life that we, we live now, they're great. But I think we have to be cognizant of how it can take us away and distract us from really tuning in Mm -hmm. because 
tuning inward is, is really important. I mean, that, whatever your spiritual life is, however you quiet down. I mean, I pray, I meditate, I do yoga, I do lots of different things, you know, but that time for me is that time to check in and, and really just hear, you know, and, and prayer, prayer is active asking. Mm-hmm. Meditation is active listening. They're different, but they're both important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Felicia. So when is your book coming out? You, you, that was my next yeah, question. Yeah, I mean, like, so, I mean, <laughs> this, I mean, you, you got TV nailed. You'll continue oh to do well in television and film. When is the book coming? Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I lo- you know what? <laughs> I, at some point, I definitely want to write. I don't know what that story will look like because I have lots of different experiences right, in my life that right. I could, that I could talk about, um, I mean, you know, you guys thought the the initial, you know, making it in L.A. story was 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 tough. I mean, even four years ago, I was living with a 65 year old uh, retired Russian woman that, you know, was very difficult, a very low point in my life. Um, That goes to show you like. This is, this is, there's nothing as glitzy and glamorous as it looks on the outside. Mm -hmm. This struggle to get to where you want is, is real. And, and I want people to know that it's possible, that anything is possible. You just, you have to be committed and, and, and do the work. And I like to tell the ugly parts of it because that's real life. You know, like Instagram life, real life, two different things. Right. And it's, I think it's important for people to hear that. So, but I will, you know what, from, from your lips to God's ears. I love that. I, I would love to write a book someday. Okay. So I'll be ready for that interview. <laughs> I'll be like, Felicia, remember we were talking about that. So that mm-hmm. is absolutely amazing. Well, we will continue uh, watching and I'll be looking for, I mean, who is going to survive on ambitions? I'm loving your character, Marilyn Barnes. And (laughs) I know the next season is coming and I know telling what the hell is going to happen. (laughs) But I'm so here for it. So here for it. Thank you so much, Felicia Terrell. And kudos to uh, the audition that you either doing or about to go on. Claim that. And I know you're about to nail everything that you execute, but I knew it, but it's that, it's that dance. It's that athlete inside of you that really really made you a go-getter uh-huh. so kudos to mom and dad yes. too for real absolutely thank you and thank, thank you, you so, so much. much i appreciate it bye thank- felicia bye <laughs> hi y'all take care <laughs> bye-bye dear that's what's up yes. i mean a true yeah. go-getter and you see yes. this woman i mean i know just gorgeous typical la yeah. absolutely gorgeous. her testimony mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she can say that but people don't talk about right. those things right so right. you, you know me, yeah. you know those my kind no, of people, I right? You know, yeah, I'll, I I'll just Absolutely. invite anybody on Dr. T show. <laughs> I'm looking out for you and, and like all that. of the VIPs and listeners because yeah. uh, you know the nice stories. I, I love them too. Right. I love the fluff. Right, 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 right. The right. fluff. Right. Yeah, right. But no, that's not what yeah. helps somebody sitting there. Like, how do I get to LA? Absolutely. How do I, you know, if, if I want to start my own business, how do I do it? Right. Is testimonies like that's Felicia's it. it? That's it. Say, so, you know what? That's yeah. It. Absolutely. I can do it. I Absolutely. Can do it. And thank you for that. Seriously. Yeah. She's definitely a principled woman. Yeah. She's an in- yep. a woman of integrity. Absolutely. Morals, principles. Absolutely. So. And I, boy, do I remember seeing tell my, think you finished with those noodles? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how they pop yep. up in your yep. life. Yep. I still do like, noodles. I last one year. I was like, University uh-uh. of Maryland. But I did the same thing. I'm no more around my noodles. Yeah, no more yeah. cup of noodles. Please. Oh, my God. Please. I we mean, how many, uh, a la, <laughs> how many ways can you prepare? Know, Souffle? Right? Yeah. <laughs> put you some shrimp in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, wow. How Incredible. About that? She just makes you feel good, you yep, know? And she yep. makes you feel like the impossible really is possible. So make sure you watch yes. her. Again, she plays Marilyn Barnes on the uh, hit show Ambitions mm-hmm. on OWN, mm-hmm. Tuesdays, 10 p.m. Yeah. Who is this? That oh, t- yeah. The, the Dr. T Lounge <laughs> just gets hotter and hotter. <laughs> um, very excited. Uh, now, now, look, if if I get this right... You might have to do, you might have to do, hold on, hold on. You don't, because if you send me, you're going to owe me Starbucks. Hold on, wait a minute. I got it right here. I'm going to let you go first, though. <laughs> no, I, no, no, it's a Dr. Tanji oh, show, so God. here you go. Now, just do that. There you go. Oh, my God. Okay, go. Izu Chiku. 
close. Very close. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next. <laughs> Is Uchiku? That was closer. That was a uh, that was pretty good. That coming. That was pretty okay. good. All right. All right. Okay. Look, you notice. Right. Did you notice how I tried? But, no, but do you notice how I tried to throw a little accent? Yeah. 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 You saw that, right? You saw that. Right? I tried to be cute. Oh it. my god. I tried That's to be cute. The... And it. It, it, it worked. He said it was closer. No, it was closer. No, it, no, no, it felt it felt good. It you felt, know what I mean? If he didn't know yeah. how his last name went, he'd be like, "Yeah, I'll go with it." <laughs> oh oh man. my god. Okay, so what is it? It's a Izu Chuku. Is it too cool? Okay. How beautiful is that? Yeah. It's, Thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm really well, grateful for it. Welcome to the Dr. Tanji okay. Show. And I mean, talking about leadership and, yes. and what, you know, this four part of a five part series Dr. Tanji is doing. Um, you're encouraging students uh, spiritually. I love, you know, something about, you know, athletes. You know, we just have that it thing and especially mm-hmm. if you had a, a great coach or training it's something that no matter what you do in life it, it, it helps with, with the steam and, and teaching forward um loving the name of your uh, youth organization alpha omega so talk about i mean why you do what you do and break down all of the greatness that you're doing yeah i do lead a group called Alpha Omega, mm-hmm. and it's connected with the Westside Church, which is a church based in Culver City. And our goal is to communicate the gospel in a healthy way where students can not just take it, but they can understand why they do what they Thank do goodness. and mm-hmm. grow and develop in their faith at their own pace. Absolutely. So we help um, the, the, the schools at UCLA, Pepperdine, West LA College, Santa Monica College, mm-hmm. Uh, and LMU, and that's kind of what oh, we help to. Too. We help our best to encourage the students uh, that are interested. So it's a lot of counseling, a lot of talking, a lot of conversations, a lot of development, yeah. and um, it's amazing. Honestly, I think I got into it because I wanted to give back to the, in the same way people gave to me when I was in their age group. That's amazing, and mm-hmm. you just you saying that you help so many college students and people through lives because one thing about whether whatever spiritual walk people have, youth today are on a whole nother level of challenges, and <laughs> you like oh, yes. so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, salute and commend you for doing that because everybody doesn't digest. Uh, spirituality and 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 lifestyles the same. So just mm-hmm. to be able to mm-hmm. communicate and assist on all of those levels, and right. no telling what you're challenged with. I mean, that's amazing. Yes, it's so needed. Everybody don't walk the same walk, and can't just get up there and testify no. and and, and no. say things that no. you know it applies to everybody. You know, so mm-hmm. kudos for that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You mentioned. Uh, I'm going to call you Kenny. Is that okay? That is <laughs> <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> You mentioned that you wanted to give back or to offer what you didn't get. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? I think that um, as I've grown up and I think as people grow, they tend to see areas of themselves that they say, oh, man, I really wish I had known that Mm -hmm. when I was in that age. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes people aren't fortunate enough to have mentors in their life. Right. And they could be making decisions that are well, way more informed if they had just had someone Absolutely. there. Not even someone telling them what to do, right. but just someone there listening to them. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, for me, giving back is so important because I just want to, at least if I could just be that person that right. someone could say, oh, I had someone that listened to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Then people tend to figure things out uh-huh. on their own. They do. Um, but they, it's helpful to have a sounding board. Absolutely. I noticed that you have a wonderful team of, of people, educators that are behind you and saying, hey, come on, let's go. How difficult was that for you to find those people to invest in your vision to help people? <sighs> it <laughs> takes a lot of patience. Yeah. And just trust, <laughs> because uh, I think as a millennial, mm-hmm. it's easy for there to be a generational gap. Right. Right. And I need to be humble and understanding where the uh, pr- previous generation comes from. Absolutely. Uh, but to have the previous generation who are older and wiser and more mature to say, you know what, even though we don't get you, we're willing to trust you and equip uh-huh. you and give you some resources to go with what you got. Uh-huh. Um, that was not easy. I, I I can only imagine. Mm-hmm. Seriously. Wow. But once you find those people, yes. you have this working relationship where you can 
uh, use the wisdom that they have right. to help inform your decisions and how you can reach the current climate, the current culture, Absolutely. which thinks differently every every year. You have, <laughs> I feel like, a different generation popping out. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but to stay up to date is really important. Ah, I think sometimes I take for granted that people will just get it, mm -hmm. and they don't. So you have to live what you're teaching. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, I, I call it, um, I've got to be in the trenches uh -huh. with the students. And they need to feel, and it's weird because most people who are older are like, I'm not going to go back to those, t you know, I don't want to yeah. go back there. Yeah. But, you know, I'm on campus, and I'm a, I'm a grad student as well, so yeah. I'm, st I'm still on campus studying even though it's a graduate degree, but... I'm there, I'm spending time with them, I'm hanging out, I'm getting to know their friends, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm uh, giving them a reason to trust me. And that's why you work, and that's why Absolutely. they trust you. I'm so glad you said that. Trust. You're there. You're yeah. actually there. Yes, you, you know are. how many people tell you, you know, students or anybody, what to do, and well, sometimes, sometimes people haven't even done it themselves. Right. Let's just be real. <laughs> and, and then what they're telling you, they haven't even been in that atmosphere. Or if they tell you to go somewhere, I'm like, have you been out on campus? Have you been on that block that mm -hmm. you're turning your nose down to? Right. Mm -hmm. To understand why they feel like they do and what they've been through. So, yeah, I, I, I see why uh, they trust you. And, you know, you're one of those type of people that needs to be cloned. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I mean, you just don't have them. But like I said, what's been poured into you and you're pouring out, the seeds will continue. And that's how we build this generational uh, wealth and, and, and a healthier mentality. So, Very yeah, important. Yeah. Absolutely. Alpha Omega. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, let's see, you started with an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you go from idea mm -hmm. to actual doing to actually seeing something and saying yeah that's right i we're doing this right how do you go from idea to actually doing because a lot of times people they have these great ideas but you know they're praying they're fasting right. they're, you know they're around people that saying hey you can do it mm -hmm. but how do you do it yeah i think that um i mean one of the main motivations is when you read the gospel and understand the gospel a part of it is what you said, the theoretical, the praying, the mm -hmm. finding the inspiration. Right. But another part of it is going out and actually making decisions to mm -hmm. practically live out. I mean, again, this is where it gets complicated because there's multiple ways of okay. doing things, right? Okay. So I think the best way to answer that is trial and error. You have to be willing to go out and try things knowing that it could completely fail. And... You know, if I had a, you know, back to when I started to now, there have been many mistakes, <laughs> many failures. Um, but it's understanding that you're going with the right mindset and the heart to get something done that's good and uh, learning from your environment and based on the mistakes that you make so that you can grow from them and not being discouraged to the point where you're like, I'm out of here because I've seen so many of my friends who've tried to start in this way, mm -hmm. but they get overwhelmed by their mistakes wow. and the things that they fall short in. And then they just, Dip out. Absolutely. But Absolutely. students need they do. mentors to continue pushing through, regardless of the mistakes that might come up. Absolutely. I've never heard anyone say trial and error. No, no, but he you just, just, you know, every, I, I just, everything that he's is saying so is, is right. No, it's oh honest and it's real. I'm like, Absolutely. Oh, get, you get my Thank stamp, you. get my Thank meow. You for yeah. being transparent, mm. you know, mm. because we do need that. You know, you've answered the call. So that makes you a leader. Right. You know, a true leader, not a politician. You don't care about being liked, yeah. but you've got a message. The message has stood the test of time. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it works. Have you ever run across a sect or a group of people that said, you know what, we're not buying it, Kenny. Thank you so much, but no, but we'll just continue doing what we're doing. Well, uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> How about every day? How about, you know, I, I think I don't look at it this way. I look at it as um, people go are on a journey. And they're at different stages of that journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that the message, the gospel, is supposed to meet people where they're at. Right. And I've never come across someone that says, I completely hate what you're saying. There's, there's never, because it relates to everyone in some way. Mm -hmm. I always meet people that are in opposition of maybe making a full commitment or something or right. saying, I want to become like that. Right. But there's always people that say, you know what, even though I may not agree with you, mm -hmm. I understand why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes over time, 
people tend life has a way of um let's say humbling people yes where they can see things differently yeah. and i've seen that happen countless times where people maybe in the, even in college maybe they go become young professionals or whatever life kind of beats them up a little bit and mm-hmm. they say you know what let me let me hear more about what you have to say right but just keeping that friendship with them and knowing that I care about them regardless of what they do, mm-hmm. um, I think that's what makes the difference. You better believe it. Meeting people where they are. Yeah. Meeting with people where they are. Wow. What's next? Ah, <laughs> the, the age-old question. Uh, I, I was at Starbucks today actually talking to someone, and they yeah. asked me the same thing. No way. And I think, well, what's next is finishing my last year of grad school. And uh, I love Pepperdine University. I love the Beautiful religion department there. Uh, great professors who are teaching and training and uh, equipping me to do good work. Uh, and then I think the next step would be continue working in college ministries. Okay. Um, perhaps even leaving here at Los Angeles and going somewhere that's maybe in more need. Of people. I can yeah, see I that. I saw that. I, so, I see you being a different oh, country, absolutely. for sure. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> yep. Um, Speaking, honey. <laughs> we'll come into an agreement with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my parents are working on this project in Nigeria currently, because that's where I'm Nigerian. Yeah, no. They're from Nigeria, yeah, yeah. and um, they're trying to build a community center in the village that my dad grew up in, mm-hmm. so that people can go back and give back. And that's something that I definitely feel strongly about. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's an option. And then... I think what's most likely will be um, I'll stay around, get some more training in ministry, local ministry, and pursue a doctorate degree of mm-hmm. some sort. And then that will be the end of schooling. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've done enough. Forever. <laughs> you know, so. I, I do have to ask this question, and if I, I don't mean to step on your toes on no, this one. No, not at all. Why not a building mm. versus the marketplace? Mm. Um, I think that, well, in Los Angeles, buildings are really expensive. (laughs) They cost a lot of money. Okay. Um, and they can, people can start viewing it as this is where I need to go in order to be close to God or Mm -hmm. in order to have a good relationship with him. Okay. And I don't know, we've been around for a while and we've seen buildings burn down, fall and get destroyed. We've seen... Churches who who have had many members just be empty. It's been empty. The buildings have been empty. So it's not about the building. Hmm. And I'm definitely all about marketplace. Let's go out, talk to people. What do you think life is about? Here's what I think. Have you heard of this alternative? And let's have a dialogue. And I think if people feel like you can have a dialogue with them, they're way more likely to listen to you. They're more likely to... Uh, explore your ideas, right. and um, it's okay to agree to disagree. That's you know, it. it's okay. And then life again has a way of humbling you to show you different things that maybe yeah. will open your ears up down the road. I love that. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know, uh, Kenny is very uh, approachable, and yes. what I love most, uh, we talk about a lot, Doctor Tan, just meeting people where they are, mm-hmm. you know, and helping them get where they want to be, and that has multiple. Roads and you also mentioned Kenny that it might not be right now. What you're pouring in may hit them two, five years from now, and then poof. Right. So it's all about being out in the trenches, and Mm -hmm. um, I I definitely see you doing that. I don't uh, see you being still at all. See you in multiple countries, but definitely back home and 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 empowering the villages without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. And you know, so and then okay, so for you just. All you need to do is create your app, uh, and we can just log on wherever we are in the world. Okay. Yes. So let me know when that, that is, comes out, and is... um, I'll, I'll I'll download. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. The there, only thing about her, okay, if you're yeah. thinking about something or just mold over it just one or two times, mm-hmm. she has a way of being a birther. Yeah. I tell her she. I get pregnant with an idea, <laughs> right. and then she brings it to pass. I kid you not. Yeah. God works through this woman. He does. So, whatever she's coming in agreement with you, be ready. <laughs> I, I mean, it's funny you mentioned the app because I have a website. I do have a company. Um, mm-hmm. I do All spiritual right. counseling and mentoring. I'm just and waiting. I've been thinking <laughs> so much about creating it oh, to how to make I'm it. I'm done. <laughs> End of the show. <laughs> yeah, how we can pay the more black. accessible. <laughs> Wow. So, uh, and I'm learning a lot about it. It does take some time. So I think you guys asked me about next step, but when I graduate, I'm definitely going to spend a lot more time 
seeing that come to fruition. Yeah, because of development, it was, for the levels that you have closed, it would take time because um, to make it compatible for the levels which, you know, you want somebody to enter. Yeah. And then um, I, I just see the languages. I mean, I just see it. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Kind of kind of large. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I, I think if it's God's will, <laughs> oh, yeah, it will happen. It's done. But I've definitely been it. thinking about it. So. Okay. All right. So I wasn't off. I wasn't off. <laughs> Not even at all. <laughs> I got close to the last thing and we got the app. Okay. 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 <laughs> I absolutely love this. Thank you for your, your joy, your peace. You, you, you have a way of just really kind of changing the landscape when you walk in a room. Oh, thank and you. And it's a beautiful thing. Thank you so very much for letting your light shine. Thank you. Yes. And thank you guys for having me on this show. I, I've enjoyed every minute of it. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Look at, look at Ninja over here. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> Did you have Pepperdine. Something to do with this? Pepperdine <laughs> University. Look. I don't know. What Pepperdine about. doing big things. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is incredible. I love it. Well, again, I love it. Um, is if students need to get in contact yes. with you, how do they reach you? Best way is either through my website, mm -hmm. which is chukuinc.com, C H U K W U I N C.com. That's easy. It's very, yeah. very, you know, it's my last name, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> and um, also my email as well. Uh, a lot of the students on campus already have that information, okay. phone number. Um, but the best the the best way would be going through the website. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry, Dr. Tanji's yeah. VIPs. Yeah. I'm gonna make sure Thank you, you can reach him if if you want to. So absolutely. And so we'll look out for everything that you are doing and mm -hmm. will continue to do on uh, massive platforms. And uh, if you need help with where you are from to where you want to be, you can always interact with Dr. Tanji at. Dr. Tanji show. Uh, this has been an amazing leadership yeah. series. I can't yeah. believe next week is part five yeah. of the wrap up. Um, I mean, you really could keep going on and on. This oh, has absolutely. been an incredible five absolutely. weeks. Absolutely. I'm telling you this, it's an eye opener for my own self. Oh yeah. I'm judging I've myself so much. by mm -hmm. these principles mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, Oh my God, when I thought I had, I was there, you find out you, you're not there. Right. <laughs> no, you because still have attitude yeah. is everything. Right. Yeah. Attitude. Is and everything. he's got a great oh, attitude. Come on. I mean, like, come you know, on. yeah, he's so confident, not only in the delivery, but what you're delivering. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it works for you, doesn't it? Oh yeah. And it works for me too. And it works for her yeah. <laughs> for him, and for anyone that's listening and watching, they need to hear this story. You guys are doing this wonderful thing in the marketplace mm -hmm. and I salute you. I, I thank you so, so very much. Thank you for not giving up when you had those tears of I'm done. Thank right. you for not throwing in the towel. Thank you for thinking of other people and then yourself, but not forgetting that you're just as important because how can you love someone else mm -hmm. if you don't love yourself? Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that, right? Right. right? Religion says love others and then yourself. Mm -hmm. He says love your neighbors as, as yourself. That's exactly. It. As, as. So it goes parallel. Amen. You know? There you go. Yeah, man. I've been reading that thing because I'm <laughs> six years old. <laughs> it's one of my favorite books. Mm -hmm. I kid you not. But you are truly a living example of what I read. Mm -hmm. And for that, I say thank you. Well, thank you. Absolutely. This is good, Dr. T. Oh, my gosh. Jeannie, what are we going to do? Hey, hey. We, we good. Yeah. We are good. Yeah. Another one. So... Another great show because you know we're always doing this together. Doing it together. Yep. Absolutely. So coming up on the show for Monday, please, it'll be part five on that show. Talk to Tanji, Mondays, uh, 5 p.m. And we're going to wrap it up. On well, Facebook so, Live. Yeah. You yeah. got to let them know so, where to find you on Monday. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so I need you to do me a huge solid, as my mama would say. I need you to at me, DM me, send me a text message. I don't know if there's a need if you don't ask. And there's a thing that says a closed mouth won't be fed. You believe that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm here for you. We're here for you. We're doing life together, and we're going to make a difference. This year, we're going to finish strong. You said some things in December 31st that you wanted to see, that you believed God for. Now I need you with that same oomph of belief to believe that you can do it. 
only reason I'm laughing because you said what your mom used to say, but all I remember my father Frank Jones said is a hard hit makes a soft eye. All right. <laughs> all of a sudden, no, it just came. It, I know I heard, I heard Frank in my head like, get it together. Get it together. Handle your business. <laughs> like everything else is cute. Hey, yeah. is that where you get that from? No, she tells is. me that. I kid you not. She it tells is. me that. It is. That's yeah. why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of the Dr. Tanji show. Of course. Thanks You've for having me. You've got a lot to do, man. Thank you, KJ. Thank you, Kitty of the City. Meow. Until next time. Bye. Goodbye.